All right, I'm going to begin making this part by selecting a sketch plane using the top, accepting the default reference as being the right datum plane, and clicking the sketch button. I'm now going to begin my sketch. Now notice again the H and the V is giving me the horizontal and the verticals. Make my rectangle. Now I'm going to use the circle, and I'm going to come over here and let the sketcher grab the middle constraint. So there's a constraint that defines the middle of that line. I'm going to click there for the center of my circle and let it grab either the top or bottom ends of the lines that form the rectangle. I'm still in the circle command so I'm going to come back over here and again allow it to grab the center. Make another circle. Now I'm going to come over out of the circle command to the trim command, or this is called delete segment. I'm going to come in here and delete half the circle, this line, this line, and the interior line. Oops, I'm going to click undo there and come in a little bit closer and delete the middle line. So now I have some default dimensions selected. I'm going to go to dimension. I'm again going to say OK to accept the defaults. Now I'm going to be able to double click on them. And let's make these reasonable dimensions here. So I'm going to make this 30, which is going to look very funny for a second. I'm going to make this center dimension. Oh, why don't we make him about 5? And then we'll make this around 10. There, that looks like a little bit better. Now, once we're done with our sketch, we'll say I'm going to click it done. Now notice my sketch is red. If I rotate it out of plane a little bit, that is the pre-selected sketch. And we'll notice that I made a slight mistake here. When I tried to delete that segment, it obviously didn't go away. So what I'm going to have to do is go back to my sketch here, right click on it, and edit the definition of the sketch. It'll bring me back into the sketch plane. I'm going to come back here to delete my segment. And let's kind of be careful here now to come back in here and make sure I actually delete it. There, it's gone away now. So now I'll again say click to collect. So now there's no line there. So I'm going to come up to extrude. Now it's going to come out and let's find a reasonable distance here. Maybe three and a half. So I'm going to come up here to the dashboard and write 3.5. And I'll say Oh, I don't know what I was expecting me to do. Oh, I was expecting me to click to accept the 3.5. And here we are being done. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Now the part that we're going to want is going to come down here and be rounded. So what I want to do, I'm going to sketch on this face and use this top face as my reference. Let's do that. I'm going to click on the sketch plane, choosing this as the sketch, and it's choosing the bottom plane or the top plane here as a reference. Well, just because it's oriented this way, I'm going to use the top surface as my reference, and I'll say OK. Now it's flipped itself around. Now here's one of the reference lines and here's the other reference line. I'm going to readjust my screen a little bit. And I'm going to start with a rectangle. Now look what happens. The rectangle clicks to this point, but it's not going to click to that point over there. We're going to have to do something about that. So let me just reasonably put it down here. I'm purposely going to make it a little short. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the sketch uh, tab, going to come down to constrain, and I'm going to use the very handy coincident constraint. So I'm going to click on it, I'm going to click on the line, and I'm going to see if I can't grab the edge of the part, which I can. Click on it, and the two of them snap together and they are now coincident. This line is coincident with this plane over here. So they'll always, so when I change the thickness or the length of this part, <coughs> the sketch 
for my new feature is going to be dragged along with it. I'm going to say OK. Now since I moved my sketch I'm going to come back up here to the top and find my little thing here over here on the right hand side to go back to my drawing plane and on. I'm going to grab a circle again. Again let it snap to the middle and to the end. I'm in, still in the circle. I'll grab another one and again I'm going to do my little trim routine here. Wrong one. Down this one down over here. Trim this out and the center lines and this piece and this piece. Now I'm going to go to my dimensions. I'll select the defaulted ones and I'll come in here 25. Why don't we make it 15? And we can make this whole We'll make it 5. Now notice those are the only two dimensions. I'm not getting a dimension for this curve because it's already been defined as being as wide or the diameter being as wide as this line is. So I'll say I'm done here and I'll go to extrude. I want to flip it so I actually use the flip command up here and I want to set it to a set size. So what did I say before? I forget 3.5. Now see again what was happening last time the check mark is in green until I come in here and hit enter so it actually has this defined dimension and I'll accept it. So there's my two pieces of my part. Now the last part they want for us making this is to make another kind of piece like that off of this edge. So again I'm going to select this edge. It's not actually let me this edge right here, this surface, if I get in there a little bit better maybe I can grab it, and this top plane. So let's come in here for my sketch. Now it kind of gets that surface better and it actually is pre-selecting this surface as being my reference. So I'm going to say I'm going to sketch that. Notice where my reference lines are, one here and one here. Now notice again that is the this is the center of my coordinate system right here. That's where I started drawing from. So now I'm going to make another rectangle. Again, not being too careful. There weren't any dimensions for this picture. So I'll just drag it out over here somewhere. I'm going to put my circle on top. Getting pretty routine here. And another circle. But now let's go in here. Well, let me trim my pieces out first. Get rid of those bits and pieces. Now I need to make another circle because this is going to be a slot. So let's go in here and notice what's happening. The little red dot is telling me that these two lines, this point or this the center of the circle can be constrained to lie along the line of that other circle. But what does that mean? It means that they're parallel to this line, this axis, this plane. So we'll do that. I'll click and now if I let it and it'll jump out to where you see the two red R's that means the, the radiuses would be constrained to be the same and that's what I want. That's what my design intent brings. So I'm going to come up here to my line. Now look it grabs here at this quadrant call it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, 0, or 360. Or if I'm somewhere else on the circle, it's a tangent uh, constraint. Well, I just wanted to grab it at the quadrant and to this quadrant. Now again, middle click to end that line. I'm still in the line tool, so I'll click again and click to the other quadrant and click. Now I'll come back to my trim tool over here and I'll trim out this part and that part. So again now I'm going to come to the sketcher, the, the dimension tool, click on it, say OK to, to accept all the pre-selected dimensions and now I can double click on any one of them. I'll do this one, it's about 10, looks OK, so let me switch that to 10. Um, I'll change this radius to 5 and let's change this radius to how about 1.5 and I have two heights here we can make this one I guess we'll leave that as being 20 and we can change this one to being 10 
again fairly arbitrary on what these dimensions happen to be so now I'm going to allow it to be extruded so I'll say OK for my sketch here's the sketch it's red it's pre-selected for my extrusion I again want to flip the direction and I guess we'll keep the thickness again the same being 3.5 this time I'm hitting enter and my check mark is there I'm saying OK and there's my part now if I wanted to pretty up the view here I can come up here to the top right hand I can turn off all my planes I can turn off my coordinate system display and I can turn off my axes so there's my part so now if I also wanted to turn off the spin center which is this part here I can do that but notice when I do the rotation now it's about whichever point I click on the screen alright let me put the spin center back on and you see even if I'm holding down here I'm always spinning the part around its spin center and the spin center is um, a location that you can spin it around alright well that's it for this uh, bit of a display so we'll stop here